about the Pope. Charles, what's going on? How you doing, Mr. Rob? I'm doing uh, good. This is Charles from the Nation of Truth. And uh, I, was, I just called in. I said, I'm just curious about this Pope. We've been hearing a lot about him. And uh, he's got a lot of uh, cult followers behind him. Uh, let me ask you, could he be the Pope, uh, which is the false prophet, that could usher in the false Messiah? Because all these people that are worshiping him uh, could be the same people that worship the false Messiah. Uh, I just want to get your take on that. Well, that's the thing about a cult of personality. It is hard to judge. And I think a lot of people are growing up. And when they grow up, they're, you know, if they're, especially if they're Catholic or Christian, always, they're brought into this uh, mindset of the Pope is all powerful. And that's, that's the end of the line for Christianity right there is the Pope. And so he's always held in reverence. And I think you have a lot of people who buy into what he's saying. A lot of people agree with him on these environmental uh, policies that he, he wants to implement. And that's the agenda, and that's it. All goes to the training. But is this guy the false prophet? Is he the antichrist? Who knows? He's probably just another hatchet man for the new world order. Uh, he's just bringing it in slowly but surely. Now the next pope will get a little more draconian on environment. He'll say, "Hey, well, you don't even need houses. We should all just be living in tents because a house uses a lot of energy, and we don't need to be using this energy." So they'll have us scattered about in fields or in giant uh, camps somewhere. So I guess I hope that answers your question, Charles. Thanks for calling. Next up is Frank in New York. Wants to talk about immigration. Frank, how you doing? Hey, Rob. How are you? I'm fine. Great. Um, if you look at the MAG report, um, it actually does state that um, if you're against immigration, you're considered a terrorist. If you're against That's immigration? 2009. Oh, wow. Yeah, in the MAG report. Yeah, look it up. Oh, it I know about the MAG report. Yeah, no, I'm going to pull it up right now. Up yeah, no, it up and I'll tell, yeah, and it actually does state that, like I said again, some redundant that if you're against immigration, you are a terrorist. You you are against the um, you know, the protocol of what they want. What you don't? Can you tell me what page it's on? I'm bringing up an old article. Secret State Police Report. Ron Paul, Bob Barr, Chuck Baldwin. Libertarians are terrorists. It's from 2009, written by Kurt Nemo. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to keep you on hold. When you have that, let me know, and because uh, I'll pull it up. Is it on screen right now? There it is. Okay. Yeah, opposition to illegal immigration and income tax resistance. <laughs> there it is. Right there. Christian identity, white nationalism, militant, anti-abortion activists. Also, so you people making videos about the anti-abortion activists are about the, uh, the cutting up of baby parts and selling them. You might be terrorists. In fact, they're probably going to come after those groups putting those videos together. Frank, thanks for bringing that up. That is important. So this has been on the agenda since 2009, at least, probably before. Aaron, you want to talk about the Pope and the UN. What's on your mind? Yeah, just first for like 10 seconds, I have a real good cause that uh, everybody should check out. It's uh, back on our feet at uh, GoFundMe.com. Some good folks. The actual uh, website is GoFundMe.com forward slash TN4 WBVDS. And uh, I, I really encourage people to, to uh, check that out. All right. But, what's uh, on your mind with the Pope? This, uh, this Pope thing is, I have, I don't know about other people out there, but it is, I have like the weirdest feeling in my stomach. And you got the, I mean, Aaron, I got a weird feeling we're up on a break. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, I will try to get to you in a second. Just hang tight there, buddy. If you're watching the fourth hour of Overdrive, it's Infowars.com, Alex Jones Show. Poor boner. Resigned today under pressure from Walter Jones and others. We had Walter Jones earlier on the show today breaking all that down with Alex. And that is, that is just amazing that we finally are getting rid of John Boehner, but they will be replacing Boehner Boner with somebody else. Probably equally as bad, another acolyte of evil. Uh, now, before we show you what a Trump supporter looks like, which I'm very interested to see, well, we have 20% off brain force right now. Um, you can talk to Anthony, Alex, or both on this. I started taking it a couple days ago. Boom, it wakes you up really quickly and not in a uh, jittery sort of way, but just you're just more alert, more alert looking around. And if you're watching me now, I'm showing you how I look around <laughs> alertly uh, after taking brain force. And also, Childies is back. Very popular. It's uh, 
pretty big bottle of liquid that you can give to your kids to uh, help calm them down, especially in this world where kids can get distracted very easily. I want to read a couple comments here. This is from Button in Canada. Help me focus in a calm, natural way. So I guess Button takes it as an adult. I take it with Super Male Vitality and other InfoWars combinations. This is by Carl in the UK. Does what it says. Regular customer. Never been let down. So try Childies if you have some children or even maybe try it on yourself. If you're an adult, see if it helps you calm your nerves, get you focused. And also try Brain Force. It's all 20% off with Brain Force right now at InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or InfoWarsLife.com. Now, Trump is leading in the polls still, 26%. Carly Fiorina is trailing now 16%. And uh, this is a poll done, it looks like, by uh, New Hampshire primary poll. It's from CNN. And then it's followed by Marco Rubio, Ben Carson, Jeb Bush, and uh, John Kasich. Of course, they don't mention Rand Paul anywhere. Uh, Rand Paul, 3%. They do finally mention him down there. Joe Biggs put this together. Back on the 14th, he went to the Trump rally in Dallas, and he interviewed a lot of Trump supporters. And here's what they sound like and what is on their mind, which I think is pretty interesting. So here's that report. I'm not going to sit here and take it anymore. cheering for Joe Biggs right there, who's showing his Hillary for Prison 2016 t-shirt. And people want pictures with it. It's pretty Why amazing. Why do you Donald Trump? American veterans. For American veterans, what else? He's just great for this country. He's going to make a change. We need a change in the White House now. And you can't beat Trump. I'm here to uh, support Donald Trump. So why do you uh, support Donald Trump? I think he can keep us all employed and uh, create, create new jobs. So what, how do you feel about his uh, stance on building a wall across the southern border? You think that's going to help? Oh, boy. Um, I think it could, yes. I like him a lot. I also like Jeb Bush. And the more I can learn about the two different positions, uh, although I will say I'm, I'm warming up to Trump more and more than I see him. I appreciate his candidness, his blunt talk, and actually think his inexperience in politics could possibly turn out to be a big plus. It certainly has di differentiated himself from most of the other candidates. I'm here because I love Donald Trump, and it's great to be at a patriotic event with a bunch of people who also feel the same way about our country. I'm hoping to see some young people, too, because we really need to get on the ball and fix this country, and we need someone who's going to get down to the root of it, get down to the main problem, and just go from there. And someone who knows how to win, which obviously he says all the time, he knows how to win and be successful. Uh, I'm an immigrant from Canada that did it right. I've been here for nine years and not, I don't have any documents because the government's oppressed me. They've done a lot of damage to my life, but I'm here and I'm here to help Donald Trump campaign so he can make my situation right so I can help America. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now we're standing outside of the American Airlines Center. Donald Trump just gave a speech. How are you guys feeling tonight after listening to Donald Trump's speech? Feeling good. I was skeptical at first about having a uh, comedian as a president, but <laughs> it was fun. I think he can do a good job. I'm feeling great. I liked it. I got a good time. He was entertaining, but he did hit some of the issues. That are you all for him? I'm, I'm, I like what he's doing. I would lean more towards the Ted Cruz. I lo uh, he said, like, the anchor babies. People don't know that's not in the Constitution. It's not right. There's a lot of things, but I think what he's doing is great. It's bringing out a great conversation. He's changing the way that the politics are being run, and I'm all for it. Trump's amazing in person. It's like if you take what you see on TV and then multiply that by 10. And if, if two words to describe the way Trump comes to comes across in person, I guess, would be authentic and, spontane and uh, spontaneous. 
So it's, it's so different from most of the Washington politicians who he'd re describe as more rehearsed and following a script, whereas Trump's presentation is spontaneous, it seems real, it seems genuine, and it seems unscripted. So. so when you came to this event tonight, how did you feel about Donald Trump before this? I've already been a fan of his. I like what he's been saying. Um, I think he's bringing up a lot of issues that a lot of other people don't have the guts to actually bring up, and he's opening up the field, but I, I think I'm going to vote for him no matter what. <laughs> what about you? I feel the same. We're from New York, so we like his bravado and the way he, you know, had, like says things that no one else will. Donald like attacks uh, Democrats and like says how he really feels, and I like that. Behind me, there's a large group of anti-Trump protesters out here. The police uh, are starting to move the line of people back this way, starting to get uh, pretty hectic. So let's go see what's going on real quick. Come on. Wow, check this out, hey. Hey, so if you're just now getting here, there's a lot of stuff going on outside of the Trump protest. So as you can see, the police lines are starting to push back. There's a lot of people with uh, Mexican flags. So there you got the uh, Dallas PD was out there with their dancing horses, keeping the protesters at bay. Those who think Trump is a racist because he's saying things that a lot of things he's saying, I think, need to be said. And you don't get politicians saying this stuff because there's uh, there's no money in uh, keeping illegal immigration out of this country. There's no money in that. And uh, so I really like Trump's stance on illegal immigration, except for building the wall. But that's a very interesting uh, video. We're going to post that on InfoWars. And I think Liam McAdoo might even play it tonight. Just gives you a real insight onto the, the Trump supporter and what he or she is all about. Now I want to change gears. Really, I'm going to make a 180 right now. This is out of Gizmodo. This is the definitive photograph of planet Earth. And uh, this is unlike NASA's Blue Marble, which was a composite for many different photographs. This is a portrait of Earth taken in one single shot. It's the highest resolution image of our home planet, 121 megapixels. And it was shot by the Russians. So it was a, a Russian satellite that shot that. And I think that is a very beautiful image of our Earth. I, the reds coming out of the deserts are really amazing. I mean, that is just deep color. Look at that. That's the planet we live on, folks. That's where all this craziness is going on, all this craziness that we've created. And then I want to follow that up with, uh, we, we posted this on InfoWars earlier in the week, a scale model of the solar system in the Nevada desert. So a couple filmmakers wanted to recreate a scale model of the entire solar system, and they use an Earth the size of a marble. The filmmakers are Wiley Overstreet and Alex Garoche. So we're going to go through a few other, they put one video up, it's about an eight-minute video, but I'm going to play some excerpts of it and analyze it. So this first video is why they decided to pull this off. Look up an image of the Earth and Moon, you're going to get a picture where they're quite close together, something like that. But in reality, the Earth and Moon are about, about that far apart. That is the Earth and the Moon to scale. Taking the same concept, but for the solar system, every single picture of the solar system that we ever encounter is not to scale. If you put the orbits to scale on a piece of paper, the planets become microscopic and you won't be able to see them. So our solar system is vast. That is to say the least, especially when you get to those outer planets. So what they did was they went out to the Black Rock Desert and they placed the sun. It was about a two-meter ball. And then they started tracing out the orbits that these planets make. And they're not all circular. There's some of them are elliptical. And they attached little lights to these. And this I'm going to show you first the inner planet. So I hope you're watching at InfoWars.com forward slash show so you can actually see 
how beautiful the orbits are in time-lapse fashions. Let's roll the inner planets. We have 36 hours to measure the distances, trace out the orbits, and set up a time-lapse shot from up on top of a nearby mountain. To create a scale